What's going on? Today we are doing Mirai from Hack the Box. Mirai is an easy machine and actually it is a Raspberry Pi Linux operating system. So the concept behind this machine is pen testing Raspberry Pi. It's very easy, uh, but we will lay down some concepts before getting started. All right. So the first stage all the time is the recon with the nmap scan. After the recon is done, we see we have two services. We have first the Raspberry Pi web page, and then we have the SSH server. After discovering the Raspberry Pi web page, we found out there is a slash admin directory that shows an admin or a login page. So technically, this is a Raspberry Pi installation, right? So we search for the login credentials, default credentials, see if the Raspberry Pi has been installed with default credentials. And we are able to log in with the default credentials, but on the SSH server, not on the admin page. So we get the first access by logging in with the default credentials on the Raspberry Pi. Then we aim for root. So aiming for root is not so difficult on this machine. All you have to do is to find out what the current user can do by running sudo dash L. And you will find out that the current user on the Raspberry Pi can do everything as everyone. Technically, everyone by I mean the root any user on the system. So you can escalate your privileges from there easy, and then you will be able to find the root flag. But the root flag you will see that it is deleted by uh, a note written by the owner. They saying they have deleted their flag. So you recover the flag and find it. Okay, so let's get started. So as you can see, we have the map scan first stage. And we have the port 80. Of course, we have f 3 LDNS, but we will not uh, go through this port. All right, so let's get started and browse with the HTTP port, see what is the Raspberry Pi login page looks like, if you haven't seen it uh, before. All right. Accessing the page. Nothing. Okay. So how to find out that there is a slash admin directory? All you have to do is to run directory search. So go buster dir dash u and dash w define or select the word list see what do we have here so big no i'm gonna select here dir bus okay see what do we have we will select the medium long word list okay so we have a little typo here Okay, I'm going to leave this running and skip right to the page. Slash admin. Is the machine up? I wonder. Okay, let me do a little reset on the machine. Sometimes you have got to do the reset if the, if the page is not accessible or if some of the surfaces are not responding. Resetting the machine may help, as you know. I'm going to stop this. 
and wait for the reset to finish. So you see here we found slash admin. Gonna stop the directory search as we have found the intended directory we want to access. But I'm not able to display anything on the page. Alright, so as you can see, by admin console. Okay, this is how the Raspberry Pi login page looks like. Uh, so a couple of things we are interested in finding out are the default credentials, whether they work or not, and the uh, version of this current Wi-Fi uh, Raspberry Pi and installation, if it is vulnerable, if there is a matching exploit to that version or not. So what do we do here? We go to Google first, find the Raspberry Pi default credentials, or I'm going to grab the page directly. You can find it from the main or official web page. So if you look at the page here these are the instructions for using ssh on linux or mac if you scroll down you will see that this line saying next you will be prompted for the password for the pi login the default password on raspberry pi os is raspberry pi so this is the username and this is the password now if we get back login Okay, since the machine is kind of slow, so I'm gonna try these credentials on SSH at the same time. SH by at 10, 10, 10, 48. So the password. Paste. So as you can see, in the SSH, we are able to log in. And there's a note here uh, for the owner or the admin. SSH is enabled, and the default password for the Pi user has not been changed. This is a security risk. Please log in as the Pi user and type password to set a new password. So for, for those who uh, buy a new Raspberry Pi, make sure you change the default credentials. Uh, if you're going to expose the Raspberry Pi to the internet or if you're going to expose public services on the Raspberry Pi operating system, you're going to have to make sure to, that you have changed the default credentials for the SSH and any public service you may host on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so here we have the login page. So we're going to try with the default password, but it will not work. But I'm showing that for demonstration purposes. Login. It's not, not doesn't, doesn't work. All right. A couple of things. There is something else we can try. As I said earlier, we have here the version. Pinehole version 3.1.4. Web interface version 3.1. FTL version 2.10. So let's see if we can find a matching exploit for this version. So Pinehole. Let's take this. exploit so pihole less than 4.4 seems to be vulnerable let's see here authenticated remote code execution this exploit must be run with root privileges and port 80 must not be occupied well it's not going to work as you know port 80 is occupied and we don't have root privileges yet while it's possible to exploit this from a non-standard port for the sake of simplicity and not having to modify the payload, please run it with sudo privileges or set up socat and route through there. Usage. Oh, it means that, oh, okay, okay, this, they're to, they are talking about our machine. So our machine, we need not to have any port on port 80. And we need to run the export on sudo purposes. I just confused this. So the usage is sudo cv.py session cookie. You are the target. Your IP address. R shell port. 
the script gets into key, the target URL. So here we have a session cookie, which means that the this export will not work in our case. Why? Because we don't have access. In order to use that exploit, we need to have authenticated access to the admin panel, right? And then input the session cookie in the uh, as the one of the command line arguments of the exploit file. Then the exploit may work, but in this case, it's not going to work. All right, so we're going to skip that. PHP remote, file home remote code execution. Let's click on that. CVE 2020-8816 impact. Pi-hole is affected by a remote code execution vulnerability. An authenticated user of the web portal can execute arbitrary command. Again, we need an authenticated access, which we don't have. Which I, I think this is uh, this has been done by purpose by the owner. They don't want you uh, to exploit <laughs> the installation. They just want you to make it easier for you to just use the default credentials on the SSH and continue from there. All right. So right now we are on the Raspberry Pi. So let's see who we are, IT. So we are the Pi user. Now we are inside the Pi in installation. So all we have to do now is to see what we can do as the Pi user. sudo dash i dash l. So see now the Pi user can run all of the commands, all right, as all the users with no passwords, which means that if we run any command, it will be run as the owner. If we try sudo dash, you know, we are the root now, okay? So we have run bash in an elevated mode. That's why we got the root user. That is a common security misconfiguration uh, in, in Linux installations, actually. So you leave the current user without any privileged restrictions. You can, they can run everything they want and as all the users. This is not common in the real world. Uh, very less machines or very less machines on the internet are configured this way. This is such, such for this is only for practice purposes, right? To get you introduced to how to do pen testing for Raspberry Pi OSs. Okay, so now uh, let's go to root and see what's inside the flag. Cat root. So I lost my original. Root.txt. I think I may have a backup on my USB stick. So you may, you may be wondering how do we find out whether that USB stick right needs to be uh, inserted on the machine in order to find out what's the content. So maybe the USB has uh, it's mounted on the machine. So we, ha we have to find out what are the mount points on the machine. So we will use a tool called DF to display the mounted points on the machine. So use DF. And we look for USB stick. So we have slash media slash USB stick. So it's mounted on the media directory. So we can access that slash media slash USB stick ls. So we have another file called dammit. So what's saying? Do you know if there is, oh, damn it, sorry man, I accidentally deleted your files off the USB stick. Do you know if there is any way to get them back, James? So we have to recover the files from the USB stick. Before doing anything on the uh, file, we need first, let's take a backup of the USB stick and then do the experimentation on it. So what we're gonna do now, we will see the okay, and from here we will use a tool called DD. In DD, we can make a backup copy of any uh, mount point. So in this case, we're gonna say f equals slash dev slash sdb and define where we will want to take that. So let's say USB stick.img so we have taken a backup copy of the USB now let's go to temp and see where is our backup file 
And here it is. Let's examine its attributes. So USB stick is um, here. So we can, yeah, we are root user. Sorry, I shouldn't have examined the permissions. Okay, so how? Let's now type strings, USB stick. And by examining the strings, we can see everything that has been done on the USB. So this is the history of the commands, right? And here I can see the flag. Mirai. Difficulty level, actually it is two. Very easy. All right, so that was for Mirai. Thank you for watching.